Hey everyone and welcome back to another industry report. Today we have news that I've been waiting on for over a decade. The Halo franchise is returning to PC, but what's almost more important though is it's not just in the Microsoft Store. It's coming to Steam, and interestingly, not the Epic Games Store. This means a hell of a lot for the industry at large, and it really does indicate a fundamental shift in the balance of power between Sony and Microsoft. Where they were previously competing based on their prior execution of similar plans, Microsoft has now changed the rules of the game. So what's actually happening? Well, Halo Master Chief Collection is one game that contains Halo 1 Remastered, Halo 2 Remastered, Halo 3, Halo ODST, and Halo 4. With the latter three titles not being um, remasters, but they do run at a higher resolution in 60 FPS. It's an absurdly good deal, having a near ludicrous amount of highly replayable game content all under one package. It had a rather disastrous launch in November 2014, but since has recovered. People had two main questions though. When will Halo Reach, Bungie's final Halo game, be added? And will it come to PC? After the announcement of Play Anywhere, which had most future Xbox exclusives also launch in PC, it seemed very possible, but, well, we kind of heard nothing for a long time. Well, Microsoft have announced that they will be bringing the Halo Master Chief Collection to PC, and that they will also be adding Reach to the collection. This is big for everyone, and when we get into the business side of things, it's massive, especially for Xbox Game Pass, which they are pushing very heavily indeed. Now, the whole collection will not come to PC at once. Halo Reach will hit PC first, with Microsoft saying they want to focus on it getting ready and being launched, instead of hanging back and delaying the whole thing so they can release all of them at the same time. So, Halo Reach and its multiplayer will hit PC as the first part of the collection. For Xbox One owners though, Reach multiplayer will be a free add-on, while the actual campaign is going to be a paid DLC. And I think that's quite fair actually given how, yeah, like it is additionally developed post-launch content. The PC version is being developed by Splash Damage and Ruffian, who are both UK studios who have assisted on Microsoft projects in the past. Now, the PC version is going to be slightly different because of its release plan, with each game being purchasable like within the Master Chief Collection once it launches. Now, we're going to have to wait and see how Microsoft choose to price this one. You know, will the cost of all of them tally up to be more expensive than the console version? Will you be able to buy the whole thing as one upfront low price? It's kind of hard to tell, to be honest. And a part of it also feels like a bit of a play for Xbox Game Pass. Remember that one of Microsoft's main goals as a business is to expand Game Pass. It's basically Microsoft's Netflix for game like subscription service that has all of their main first party titles as well as many third party titles. Being a subscription, well, it's important for them to give people a reason to keep subscribed. So having the games release over a year or two, well, that would give people continued reasons to subscribe to Xbox Game Pass and ideally work as a gateway drug to basically get PC gamers on board. Why? Well, if they pick it up for Master Chief Collection, they'd also get access to much of the rest of the Xbox library, or at the very least, the ones that are currently available through Play Anywhere. Of course, they could fully port over Game Pass to Windows, that would involve getting a bunch of currently Xbox only titles working on PC, but the thing is that shouldn't be too hard. The Xbox One mostly is just a regular x86 system and with Microsoft adding Xbox libraries to Windows 10 in an upcoming update, it seems highly likely that we will indeed see the whole of Game Pass be available on the PC. So you maybe would get Game Pass for Halo Reach, then maybe you'd play Gears of War 1 through 4, then maybe you'd play Halo 1, then you'd dabble in Sea of Thieves, Forza Horizon, and maybe Halo 2 comes out. Maybe then you pick up Alien Isolation because, hey, you haven't checked it out and it's free in Game Pass. As you can see, Microsoft really could use this as an opportunity to grow the Game Pass service over to a PC audience. This could result in a massive amount of revenue from them just putting content that they already own onto another platform that they already own. Now, during the same stream that they showed off Master Chief Collection, they also showed off Project xCloud, which we've talked about on the channel before. And xCloud would expand Xbox's, well, the Xbox platform over to mobile devices, and if rumors are true, the Nintendo Switch. The Switch would give them access to like 40 million more users, minus those who already have um, Game Pass, of course, but really, if you own a Switch and a PC, then Game Pass would make a lot of sense. It would give you the full Xbox library on both devices. Now, sure, that would not necessitate owning an Xbox, 
but Microsoft are clearly okay with that. That's clearly worked into their numbers. After all, services are the main driver of their business under Satya Nadella. So, I mean, like just look at any of the Microsoft earnings reports lately. You'll see one word everywhere, services, cloud, office, productivity, business. They are all moving towards basically subscription services. Now Game Pass and PC would also mean Halo 5 and PC which could again be made possible by those upcoming Windows updates that add the Xbox libraries. So as a PC gamer, it really is a massive win for me. We're going to get more games and we're going to get more choices. This is so much better than having another console be locked down with exclusive releases. We're also going to get access to what I really do think is one of the best game collections out there. So it really is a massive win-win, seemingly both for us and for Microsoft, who of course will benefit from increased service revenue. Now it's odd when I look at the comments of many of these videos, there's a big anti-profit sentiment. A lot of people are basically against profit and growth. That's quite strange because those are the things, they are the machine that has also created the good parts of this industry. So yes, Microsoft will do good by this. They'll also make a good profit. Why? Well, in this case, because they will have offered a competitively priced product on a new market. There's nothing wrong with that. That is good for consumers because they have more choice in product and in platform. And then while we're on the topic of choice, they're also releasing it on Steam. Now, to be clear, basically, if you buy this game in Steam and launch it through Steam, it'll kind of open up like a mini version of like the Xbox platform or whatever. So it's a bit like buying a Uplay game in Steam. But I think for many people, just that being in Steam is a big statement of intent. Like that really is saying to PC gamers, like that you can buy our games on the platform, you know, Steam that you're used to. Now they, I believe they have tried to, they've actually done this for other games because I think it was Quantum Break that released only, initially it released only on the, um, only on the, like the Microsoft store and performed terribly. So for them, it makes a lot of business sense as well. At the end of the day, many PC gamers are not gonna go onto the Microsoft store. But just in principle, that being on Steam, I think that is a big statement that is going to mean a lot for PC gamers um, in Microsoft's intent, and I think endear Microsoft to them, which absolutely is something that they have to do because the Windows Store experience is pretty rubbish. The Xbox on Windows experience is not great either. And certainly a lot of us still remember games for Windows Live. And we really wish we didn't because it's a very bad memory. It really sucked. Then as for Halo being on the PC, well, I think it's going to hold up quite well. I actually played the Master Chief Collection on a mouse and keyboard through a converter on Xbox One. It's a converter that essentially takes mouse inputs and translates them over to gamepad stick movements. Now you still do have all the same limitations of what a stick can actually do. And that means that it really doesn't feel great as compared to a native PC title, but at the very least for me, it was a large improvement in comfort. It worked quite well, so it's going to be really exciting to see that all running natively. Although I suppose there may be some balance concerns with maybe the Halo sniper rifle. But past that, Halo actually always implemented aim assist pretty well to get over the gamepad's problems. So I don't think that the increased ability to accurately headshot players is going to be much of a balance concern. Maybe a few tweaks and hitboxes will be needed, but it should be fine. Good Halo players could easily, you know, hit headshots all the time anyway. Now, of course, if there was crossplay, the PC people would probably shred the console people because of the precision of a mouse. Chances are there won't be crossplay, and if there was crossplay, I think that would be unfair to the console players, and I think it would degrade the competitiveness on playing on either platform. Now, as for the Halo games, well, they've always had fantastic campaigns. They've had great custom game features like Forge, you know, even the custom maps, the custom game modes, the stuff that people could create. The campaigns are also very replayable because of all the different skulls and unlockables. Its multiplayer is frankly legendary though, and that's what I'm really excited about. In Halo 3, you would, and really most of the Halos, Halo 4 had some issues, like big issues with the multiplayer, but you know, each map would have set spawn locations for weapons and you would all spawn in with the same weapon. So, and that would mean maybe the battle rifle would have a few spawn locations in the map. Power weapons like the energy sword, grav hammer, shotgun, and sniper would all have fixed spawn locations on the map. And this was fantastic for competitive play. It made map control extremely important and it added another level of gameplay above just the regular gunplay. Destiny 2 multiplayer actually really suffers from this because it allows for players to enter games with, you know, preset loadouts. 
And sure, it limits its special and power weapon ammo, which is a very good move by Bungie, but there's a big difference between generic power ammo that can turn into a sword, a rocket launcher, or a machine gun, or, you know, a specific power weapon in a specific location. I think the latter is a more fixed variable, which is just better suited to competitive play. Past that, though, Halo also had a very high time to kill as compared to many other games. This meant combat was always a proper duel, where skill really did matter. And it also gave you enough time to properly kind of play it out against your component. Well, in Call of Duty, as an example, the randomness and low time to kill can mean that a skilled player can be killed by an unskilled player just some of the time because of randomness and bullet spray. But in Halo, in a one-on-one -on -one duel, the strong player will almost always win. And that means that Halo is very punishing, but very fair. And that's probably why it has a smaller player base than Call of Duty. It just is a more punishing game. Players with more skill and more knowledge will almost always win. I mean, they'll always win. That's not ideal for casual players, but it does allow for a healthy competitive scene and enduring gameplay for those who love it. Halo 5 is especially good at this. It has truly wonderful multiplayer. Yes, in spite of its single player, which was well below the series par. So if Halo 5 also releases via Game Pass, that's definitely something I'd be excited for. So overall, this is a pretty big win for everyone. More choices, more games on more platforms. That just seems like a good, pretty pro-consumer thing anyway. So yeah, as much as a lot of people in my previous video regarding Microsoft's future plans were saying like, this just means more money for Microsoft. What's good for the consumers? Well, I think it's pretty obvious what's good for the consumers. And it definitely is a good thing. So I'm actually pretty excited about this. I'm excited about what this could mean for just future development in general as we move into whatever's after the Xbox One um, and the console after that. There's just going to be a lot more cross, you know, availability of titles. Whenever Microsoft do maybe have Obsidian or Rare or whatever develop their next big title, well, it's going to be available on PC. And that really does change the nature of the game for Sony, who in the PS5 era could very much still be operating with a PS4-like business model in a world where Microsoft finally is leveraging the fact that it owns Windows. And that could be a real tricky thing for Sony to get around. But anyway, there you go. That is it for this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the content on the channel. We had a news roundup yesterday, a bunch of other content, other video um, videos up today. So be sure to check that out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.